Welcome, everybody. Hope everybody's doing well. Hope everybody had uh, their best shoes on tonight and, and the right breath mints for our Zoom call. That's the reality we're in. Um, I'm excited to have Liberty here um, again tonight for an awesome powwow. Um, and James, I'll throw the mic over to you. Great. Uh, thanks so much, Dr. Kaplan. It is uh, a privilege to be here. And uh, I, I know I speak for all of my uh, uh, friends, my holistic and Liberty uh, cannabis team here, but we are just, we're, we, we love Seed Clinic and uh, we're big fans of yours and um, just thanks for having us. Um, so we can't wait. We love this, uh, the idea of this, uh, of this, um, of this uh, program to really give people insight in what a dispensary experience is like and what it looks like inside a dispensary and we're excited to show you what it looks like inside a Liberty dispensary. And to get us started, I'm going to kick it off, uh, kick it over to Chris Smith our market director for Massachusetts. Chris? I appreciate that, thank you. I am Chris. I um, am the market director for Massachusetts. So essentially I oversee all of the dispensary operations for, uh, for Massachusetts, Somerville, Springfield, and East Hampton. And my role is really to support the teams um, in, in whatever they need really. So uh, product, education, um, and just general support. Uh, I've been with Liberty for about six months now after uh, several years in uh, traditional retail management. So very excited to be here. Um, and I'll, uh, I'll kick it over to Jeremy, who's the dispensary manager. And good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm Jeremy Medeiros. I'm the general manager of Liberty Somerville. And uh, yeah, uh, much like Chris, I've had a, a long career in retail, um, working nearly 23 years with a, with a notable uh, grocer, and uh, decided to follow a friend along into the cannabis industry and uh, helped open this store as the assistant general manager under Sarah Stretchberry, who's a uh, Who's, uh, who's climbed the ranks here with Liberty and Holistic Industries. Um, and I took over almost two years ago as the general manager. And I've been uh, very happy here to serve our patients in Somerville. And I'd like to uh, pass the baton here to uh, Patrick Mahar, our sales manager here for the state of Massachusetts. Awesome, thank you, Jeremy. Uh, thank you all for being here tonight. And uh... It's a pleasure to be here. My name is Patrick Mahar. I am the sales accounts manager for Holistic Industries Mass. Um, worked with the company now for just about three years and kind of started at the ground level and worked my way up. So I've seen kind of every, every different facet of the facility and am, you know, thrilled to be working with this company and providing, you know, this level of uh, medicine to Massachusetts. And yeah, thank you. Before Jeremy gets started, I'm Sharon Artley. I'm the Community Out Outreach Operations Manager working with Rabbi James Kahn. So really excited to be here and listen in. And I'm going to turn it over to Jeremy to take you through Liberty Somerville. Okay. So let's, uh, let's get started. Um, so uh, we operate here in uh, Union Square in Somerville. Our address is 304 Somerville Ave. Um, just, you know, just a matter of steps away from the square where... Uh, or we're known for restaurants and some entertainment here in the neighborhood. It's a very uh, exciting neighborhood to be in. Um, so here at Liberty, we are med medical only, um, just you know, just a medical dispensary, um, and very happy to you know be serving the patients of Somerville and the greater Boston area. Um, basically, we have a team here of uh, experienced uh, you know guides as well as our uh, you know our supervisor staff. Many of them have worked for other dispensaries uh, in the area. Um, you know, prior to coming on board, which was, you know, something we really have worked on trying to find some people with experience, you know, when we can, um, well, as long as, you know, as well as, you know, individuals with, a, a, you know, great enthusiasm, uh, who have also been patients for a while. So, um, I'm just going to minimize this. There we go. Okay. So, uh, as I mentioned, we're medical only and our hours are 10 to 8 p.m., Monday through Saturday and 11 to 5 p.m. on Sunday. Um, we offer online ordering and curbside pickup as well. Um, and we're fortunate that the state has extended that as we continue on through the, um, through the pandemic. It's a great option for people who want to limit their exposure to uh, other individuals. Um, and we do welcome walk-ins at our location as well. I know there's some places where you have to have an online order for entrance, um, but we're still allowing walk-ins as well. 
Okay, so the standard procedure when entering the dispensary is consistent throughout the state. Um, you can't just walk in the building. Um, so when you arrive for your first visit, if you're a new patient, um, there's usually a doorbell and camera system. And when you arrive, you'll just usually ring the doorbell and present your IDs and you'll be entered, allowed to enter the building. At that time, an associate will just verify that your IDs are up to date and they'll basically allow you into the building where you'll get to meet with someone at our concierge desk. Um, so this is our first room here. And I think you saw the uh, also some of the other uh, furnishings there. We've got uh, a few couches and some other lounge chairs for you to relax, uh, you know, in the, uh, the case that you have to wait. Um, we try to foster a very welcoming environment here, especially now in the, uh, you know, while we're still dealing with the pandemic, a lot of people are a little nervous coming inside. So we want to make sure that everyone feels welcome and comfortable when they arrive. So, um, yeah, okay. So as far as uh, some of the benefits of being a medical patient, obviously, uh, with the adult use market, there are no discounts on product. Within the medical industry, we do permit discounts and allow discounts. Um, for a new patient, we have a 25% uh, discount on your entire purchase. And at that time, you'll also uh, enroll in our rewards program, which I can get into detail a little later. We also offer different uh, discounts for demographic groups. Um, we have discounts for seniors, veterans, industry, uh, and also financial hardship as well. Right. So once you've uh, been enrolled, you know, up front, or if you're a returning, you know, patient, um, once uh, one of our guides is ready, you'll be escorted to the guide and introduced, and uh, you'll have an opportunity to sit and, you know, discuss um, what you're looking for with the guides. And many of our guides, well, all of our guides are all patients and enrolled in the medical program. So they're very well versed in, you know, what to expect from any category of our products. Um, and, you know, maybe just give some personal advice as to what works well for them. And also we have some private consultation rooms in the back of the building, uh, just past all of the registers. And we find ourselves using those uh, frequently for people who are very new to cannabis and have a lot of questions. And I uh, would just like to have a, you know, a quiet, safe place to basically discuss that. Um, you know, they may want to kind of discuss some of their other uh, elements they're looking to treat and, you know, find the best path. Also, you know, a lot of our patients who are dealing with, you know, maybe, you know, more severe anxiety, it's an opportunity for them to just, you know, talk one-to-one -one without, you know, other people in, you know, earshot. Okay. Um, obviously, I've mentioned the uh, pandemic a few times, and I just wanted to go over some of our COVID preventions. Um, first and foremost, um, masks are, are required for entry in the store and will remain so. Uh, Somerville has actually sort of decided to not follow along with the state's, uh, you know, reopening plans and still making it mandatory for mask wearing. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, it's, it's been a great thing. I think it's helped keep our team and our patients safe. Um, basically, you know, we've got floor markers to help, you know, sort of mark uh, you know, spots to stand so we can maintain social distancing. We offer hand sanitizer when you first walk in and it's available at all the workstations as well. Um, and stanchions, again, to help kind of just really, you know, mark and make clear the, uh, the distancing guidelines. We also have plexiglass barriers installed at all the workstations, you know, the concierge desk as well as the registers. And, you know, in an effort to like make the transactions as sort of contact free as possible, we have, you know, we have got uh, QR codes posted all the registers so you can scan the menus or scan the rewards uh, system uh, to check your rewards and also, uh, you know, basically touch free forms of payment as well. Okay. So we uh, mentioned a little bit about some of the deals and for first patients, the first time patients, we offer 25% off of their entire purchase with no limit um, with the exception of the state guideline. A lot of times we've realized that some new patients uh, are not aware that they have a 10 ounce um, rolling 60 day allotment that they have to stick to and they can't purchase beyond that. Um, uh, as far as the demographic discounts I mentioned, we do have seniors, pediatrics, industry, financial hardship, and uh, those are all 10% discounts, as well as uh, a larger discount for hospice and veterans. And we now also offer a recertification deal at 20% off. Uh, one of the other things that we can do here in the medical program is offer weekly deals, sales, and uh, additional discounts. Um, and those will involve, you know, a variety of products or sometimes entire categories. 
throughout the uh, throughout the store's inventory. Um, so we can discuss the rewards um, a little more in detail here. Um, our rewards program is basically based on number of visits here. Um, for each time you purchase fifty dollars or more, you receive a point. Once you've attained three points. Um, you're due for a reward. And uh, I think the most popular one is that we offer a dollar eighth of your choice here in the store um, once you've gotten to that point. Um, um, along with that, we also offer, uh, you know, steeply discounted uh, concentrates, packs, pods, cartridges as well. Excellent. And okay, and we're going to move into uh, some of our, uh, you know, some of our popular product offerings. Uh, we are very excited to uh, introduce the Dew Drops line roughly, uh, I'd say maybe one year to 18 months ago. And many of the dispensaries in the state offer um, gummies and uh, the majority of them are primarily starting at about five milligrams per dose. Uh, when we you know, started thinking about this, we wanted to offer something that was going to be great for people who are new to cannabis, you know, basically be really uh, accessible and approachable, but also uh, great for daytime use for people who need to medicate. Maybe you want to, you know, use something to help relieve uh, pain or anxiety through the course of the day. Um, so we went with a 2.5 milligram offering and uh, those dew drops are available in five different fruit flavors. Uh, obviously we see lemon, sour blue raspberry, watermelon here, but we also offer sour orange and green apple, as well as two chocolate offerings. Uh, my favorite is the espresso chocolate dew drops. Uh, they're, they're really delicious and I may potentially overindulge in those from time to time. Yeah, I'm going to have to, uh, I'm going to have to say my, my favorite is the, uh, the chocolate sea salt, actually. Um, I would say if I could, I would share with you, um, but that's a lie. I wouldn't share them with you. Um, so uh, you'll have to pick up your own bag. Um, but uh, as I mentioned in the beginning, you know, part of my, my role is um, helping to bring uh, some of the products into the dispensary. And I work um, very closely with uh, Pat on a lot of that as well. And, you know, one of the, the number one um, ways that we decide what to bring in is really based off of um, what the customer wants. And we do that through a couple different ways based off of what the customer is buying, um, what the customer is requesting. And then we also use um, um, basic um, market databases and, um, and market reporting as well. Uh, there's a couple uh, cannabis industry reports out there. And um, one of the really cool things about those reports is that, um, you know, looking at um, the flower that was available in the state in 2020 uh, strain, which is our house flower, um, was the number one selling flower in all of Massachusetts. And Chaos Kush number three was the number one um, selling flower in the state. So something that we're really proud of. I think that we, you know, we, we took five of the top 10 spots for um, for flour in Massachusetts, which I think is really impressive. So um, I think that speaks uh, very highly to the, the quality of product uh, that we make, but um, you know, our product alone is not going to, to fill our uh, dispensary and meet our, our, our patient's needs. So um, you know, we do have a variety of products from all different uh, third-party vendors from across the state are constantly finding uh, new ways to meet our patients' needs by bringing in or testing additional uh, flour or concentrates um, or edibles. Um, I know Jeremy just went over the dew drops, um, which are fantastic. Uh, that's a nice low dose for somebody that is new to, um, new to an edible or likes a micro dose or is looking for um, you know, something that they can eat a lot of. Um, uh, that's where I would classify myself uh, in that category. Um, but we also have some, you know, with the, that's on the low end at a 2.5. We have um, some um, edibles in Somerville that are uh, 25 milligrams, 50 milligrams, all the way up to 100 milligrams per individual serving. So um, we really have something that's going to fit everybody's needs um, in those areas. Yeah. Yeah, just to tag on to uh, Chris's comment about the high dose edibles, that's one of the uh, one of the more common requests we have. And if our inventory is low, you know, uh, 
you know, it's tough. It's, it seems to be an easy way for a lot of uh, patients who are trying to medicate specifically for pain, uh, you know, or sleeplessness. And uh, in some cases, especially if your tolerance is a little bit higher, you may need, you know, as much as 50 milligrams. And in some cases, uh, individuals uh, will need 100 milligrams sometimes to make sure or guarantee they sleep through the night or, you know, that their pain isn't so distracting. So um, it's great that we have the opportunity to really sort of, you know, discuss, you know, who, what patients are, you know, purchasing in other, you know, locations as they're, they're shopping throughout the state and uh, get a real sense of what they need so we know what to look for. I will say one other thing there too. Um, when I first started in my role, um, one of the first things I did was I talked to all of the wellness guides that are in the locations. Um, and I think that one thing that really stood out is that all of the wellness guides that I spoke to are really there for the right reason. Um, they all mentioned that they are with us because they believe in um, cannabis and they believe in helping people and they really want to, um, to share that information and that, that knowledge. So, um, you know, I think that, um, you know, it, we are a business, but that's, that's not why we open our doors every day. It's, it's to really help people. So you can know that if we're recommending a product, it's truly designed to, to help that patient uh, find the best effect for them. And Sharon, I think we can go to the Garcia handpick now. Yeah. Yep, my screen's frozen. Hold on. No worries. So we are launching, well, well Sharon pulls that up. Uh, we will be launching um, a new line in Massachusetts uh, very soon. Um, there we go. Garcia hey. handpicked. Um, and uh, Jeremy, I think you were going to talk a little bit about this. Yeah, this is something that's very exciting for every one of the company. And as we uh, we start to share information, there seems to be a great buzz about it. But we had uh, basically been communicating with the Garcia family um, probably the later half of 2019, and an agreement was reached. And so we'll be launching a line of products. Um, um, and I think it'll kind of go a little bit beyond just, uh, you know, cannabis products, but um, we will be launching a line of uh, flour, uh, also pre-roll packs and some gummies, uh, you know, that are basically, you know, you know, put together and agreed upon by both parties, basically with the, uh, the family's input into it. So um, we've uh, been very excited for this and it does look like we should see these launch and hit the market hope possibly in the next uh, month uh, hopefully sooner because uh, I guess I can probably at least speak for myself we're all very excited to see this come in um, yeah. I think uh, yeah. and these are uh, the, the gummies here are little uh, little Garcia uh, guitar picks which is really cool as well yeah myself as a guitarist I'm a, yeah I, I kind of really they get two thumbs up for me from that. Actually modeled after Jerry's real guitar picks. Uh, his daughter, Trixie, uh, gave us one to make a mold of. Um, nice. and, and really the whole family has been, when we say Garcia handpicked, um, that's because they're helping handpick each strain. They're having such a, you know, it, this is a way for them to continue Jerry's legacy of, of bringing joy and um, elevating and lifting up uh, souls. Um, through music and now through cannabis. And then just to add on to the Jerry line itself, all of the flour that you'll find in the Jerry line is exclusive to that line. So we're, we're pretty excited about, you know, launching some, some pretty new and exciting strains in that line. And now we're, now we're getting into the grow and processing and the whole seed to sale system that we work at, uh, work through and with in Massachusetts. At our uh, grow and processing facility, we focus on a few different things that definitely help sep separate us from some of the other, you know, vendors in the state. Some of the things we take, you know, a lot of pride in is our cleanliness, our quality, compliance, consistency, and the teamwork uh, at all of our facilities. It is definitely a major, major reason what that allows us to, you know, achieve the success we have already and continue continued growth. Um, some of our, you know, more popular flower strains that we're currently cultivating are uh, Mendo Breath, Chaos Kush Number no. Three, and Lime Fire Skunk. And then, so over into the post harvest department. So after everything is uh, grown out for about, you know, twelve to fourteen weeks, the 
cultivation crew will cut it down and then all the product is moved over to the post harvest department where they dry and cure the product for about six weeks as well as you know get the product tested long before it is uh, made ready for sale to any medical patients. Um, in post harvest we package all of our flour into 3.5 grams eighths as well as pre-rolls. Currently we're doing half gram pre-rolls for strain and we'll be doing 0.7 gram pre-rolls for the Gar Garcia hand pick line. We do also offer multi-packs of pre-rolls and that's one of the newer things that we've added to our strain lineup and will also be included in the, in the Jerry Garcia line. Over to the processing in lab. So after, you know, the batches are gone through and there's trim produced out of each batch and also full, full batches of flour as needed to make sure we have enough stuff to produce all the other great things that we produce there. Um, we'll take the trim and we use hydrocarbon extraction to convert the flour into oil and concentrates. From there, we make a variety of products with, you know, a bunch of different methods uh, we, we do make some live products, which is when you cut the plants down and you immediately stick them in the freezer. So it's called fresh frozen. And then we also use dry cured plant material as well. So at our uh, facility here, we do make concentrates, PAX pods, 510 thread vaporizers, uh, distillate and RSO capsules. And then over in the kitchen, we produce the dewdrop gummy line and chocolate line, as well as we're about to we're very excited and about to be launching the Garcia handpicked uh, mixed berry guitar pick gummies. We also produce some specialty high dose items that you can find in Liberty Somerville. Hi, everybody. Oh. <laughs> you can go back to that. That's uh, that first slide, uh, Sharon. Um, I'm James Kahn. I'm, I'm a rabbi uh, as well. Um, so that that makes us a little unique uh, that Liberty has its own rabbi. <laughs> um, <laughs> But my job is, uh, is, is as a national director of community outreach. Um, and, I, and I help run along with Sharon, our, our corporate responsibility platform. Um, Liberty is a mission-driven company. Um, we believe in doing well by doing good. Uh, now this takes on a lot of different forms and I thought I would take a few minutes to review those with you. Um, mainly because I think it's important for you to know that when you shop at Liberty, your dollars are going more uh, are going beyond just paying for the cannabis. They're also paying for some of the, the deep work we're doing in communities around the country. Um, so that includes a national level where we're helping to shape an ethical cannabis industry, um, pairing our success with a commitment to um, make cannabis a force for good, uh, with our commitment to putting patients and customers first and our commitment to investing in the communities that we serve. On a state level, um, that it, it, it gets as um, deep as where we locate our cultivation facilities. We typically pick locations that are underserved or in need of, of economic stimulus. Um, in some locations, we become the largest employer in a community. Um, and we're not just any employer, we're an employer who, um, who pays a livable wage and who ensures our full-time staff have access to quality healthcare benefits and paid time off. Um, on a store level, uh, we take a regional approach. So we have often have stores clustered together. And what that means is that we can, um, we can go pretty deep in communities. We work hard to find stakeholders and other and nonprofits that share our values and we invest in them um, and make sure that, uh, that cannabis is a force for good in these communities. Um, for a lot of places that have not, uh, that are new to cannabis, um, there may be a lot of concerns that, you know, the sky is going to fall when cannabis comes to town. So not only are we intent on making sure the sky does not fall, uh, but uh, all the more so we're, 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 we're doing a lot of good. And we're really trying to rewrite the narrative around cannabis so that some of the fear that comes from the ignorance of not knowing what a cannabis program looks like and what cannabis might, uh, you know, what might look like as medicine in your life that we can help um, allay, allay some of those fears um, and, uh, and really rewrite the script on cannabis. And of course, on a personal level, um, our community outreach and our corporate responsibility at Liberty is really about empowering our staff. Um, our staff know the locations that they work out, that they work at, the, they know them best. They know the problems that are facing those communities. They know the challenges. 
They know the uh, organizations that are making a difference and the people that are making a difference. And so we utilize those relationships and, uh, and, and, we, um, and we empower them to, to do good. Um, we do this through a platform called Liberty Cannabis Cares. It's the home of all of our corporate responsibility work and every state we operate in and every neighborhood we are lucky enough to be a part of. We think beyond the business of cannabis and we work towards positive social change. We think of our, uh, our actions, uh, our initiatives under Liberty Cannabis Cares really through uh, four different pillars, social equity, diversity, cannabis education, and community engagement. Um, I'll give you a few examples. Um, so, um, with uh, regard to Somerville specifically, uh, this past uh, Christmas, we, um, we were gold sponsors of Somerville's sixth annual holiday stroll uh, with uh, Union Square Main Streets, which is a business association. We offered many Union Square stimulus grants that helped our neighboring businesses, many of whom are really struggling because of COVID. Um, cover the cost of holiday store decorations. And then we, we, uh, we, we um, provided prize money, a few thousand dollars in prize money for those stores um, uh, to, to be granted a, to whoever put the best um, holiday storefront decoration together. Um, we, at the beginning of COVID, when, uh, when, when uh, masks were, were, were um, hard to get and hand, sanitize, hand sanitizer was uh, very difficult to get, we... Um, we used our sources to secure 10,000 masks uh, and donated them uh, around the country to municipalities around the country, including 2,500 to the city of Somerville, along with many gallons of hand sanitizer that we were able to convert our, uh, some of our processing labs in order to produce ourselves. Um, we've donated more than $10,000 in 2020 to the Somerville Homeless Coalition and other organizations like um, the Color of Change and the Last Prisoner Project, ACLU and the NAACP Legal Defense Fund. Um, altogether, we've donated over $100,000 just in 2020. Um, these are a few other examples of things we've done around, around the country. Um, I'm sorry, 6,000 N95 masks to first responders in hard hit nursing homes across the country. The other 4,000 went to our stores and our employees to keep them safe. Um, this Easter, we'll be, uh, we'll be doing another uh, ham project, what we call Pork for the People or Hams for Hunger or Hams for Humanity, where we give out hams uh, to folks, uh, low income people who are struggling right now to be able to afford a holiday dinner. Um, and um, that's just a little taste of what we do at Liberty um, and the values that inspire us each and every day. Um, this is our team, um, at least a snapshot from before COVID. And this is uh, on the left there are two representatives some from the Somerville Homeless Coalition uh, who uh, prior to COVID, uh, when we had uh, Liberty Cannabis Cares Day, uh, they would come and show up and a portion of our revenue that day went to um, an organization like Somerville Homeless Coalition. Um, we are happy to answer any additional questions that you might have. You could enter them via Facebook or some other uh, mechanism of getting them to us or even stop by the store and ask them yourself or give us a call. Um, but that's, that's it for now. Uh, any questions, we'd be, we'd be happy to uh, take them. A couple, I have a couple that have come in. Um, Great. So as far as, you know, making an appointments or ordering ahead of time, um, you know, clearly there are options for in-person, as, as you mentioned. Um, are there also options for ordering ahead on the computer and are there options also for phone? Uh, yep, those are actually both options. This is Jeremy, the GM. Um, so we do occasionally take phone orders. Uh, there's some folks who aren't comfortable with, uh, with using some of the online systems, but we uh, partner with a company called Dutchie and uh, we basically maintain our online menu at our website, libertycannabis.com. And patients you know, can simply click on the menu tab at the very top of the, uh, the, uh, the window and be able to select their store um, and all of our locations throughout the US can be found there, but just simply click on Somerville. You just verify that you're, uh, you're permitted to buy cannabis, you're 21 and over, and you can just scroll through, browse our entire menu and place your order through there. It's a simple process that once you've selected your items and you move to the, uh, well, we won't call it a checkout process, but to just submit your order. It's just some simple information. It's uh, your name, date of birth, date of birth uh, patient number, and, uh, and um, 
phone number. And once you've submitted, we receive it and typically fulfill it in a matter of minutes. Um, so it's ready for pickup fairly quick. Awesome. Um, another question here is about the temporary card that patients get as they become new patients. Mm -hmm. um, some dispensaries are asking patients to you know, show it in, in terms of a printout. Some people are asking them to email the dispensary ahead of time and other people are, are accepting it as a, I guess, a PDF on a phone. Mm -hmm. um, do you guys have a policy? Uh, a PDF on a phone is very good for uh, getting them through the doors, but typically, yeah, it's it's nice to obviously have a hard copy. The state does require that we actually, you know, have a, a, you know valid forms of identification for entry. So typically, you know, we'll let patients know, especially if they're reaching out to us initially, that if they can send us a quick email, we can print the temporary file out. Obviously, just by going to the uh, the Mass uh, CIP uh, mm -hmm. website, once you've been uh, issued your temporary card, uh, there's a a link that opens up a PDF, which you can simply save and uh, an email right over to us and awesome. we'll work from there. We'll print one up and then they'll have it ready to go for the other dispensaries they visit. Great. Um, I have a, I have a question actually for each of you. Um, and I, I would like to hear your favorite products and why. I can go first if no one else is jumping in. Go first. Um, so I, um, I do think that the dew drops are one of my, my favorites. Um, so I do a lot of, um, long distance running. Um, I do 50 Ks, 50 miles, um, and, uh, pretty much any length that I can, uh, I can talk my friends into doing with me. So, um, because of that, I typically, uh, keep my actual smoking to a minimum, um, I typically don't like to, um, you know, have a lot of smoke in my lungs if I'm going to be out uh, running. So if I do end up smoking, it'll be like a PAX device or a, a cartridge, a little bit more of a, a vape than, uh, than actually um, smoking. So I like the dew drops because um, one, they taste great, um, but they give me the effect that I'm looking for. Um, but I'm also... Um, I'm not a stranger to taking them on a run with me um, as well. Um, you know, I know that, uh, so, you know, some of the longer runs I've done, there's um, drop bags and, um, you know, I, when you swing by for nutrition and things like that, uh, and some of these ultras, there's M&Ms and there's other kind of junk food to keep you going. And um, a while ago after an injury, a buddy of mine uh, recommended cannabis, which is what got me into the, the industry. And since then, I uh, always keep some sort of edible in my drop bag. So uh, when I'm looking for that nutrition piece and something to keep going at, you know, mile 30, um, I'm also getting um, uh, some, some pain relief uh, along the way as well, because obviously um, that does a number on my body. So it's, it's really interesting. You know, a lot of um, it's very common for marathoners to take um, ibuprofen and, and it's actually not recommended, um, around the run because a, you're a little bit dehydrated and, and, and the ibuprofens are processed in your kidneys. Um, and it can be problematic for people. Um, but actually cannabis as an anti-inflammatory is not only stronger, but not primarily processed in your kidneys. Um, so Christoph, okay. uh, Christopher, I wonder if we have, um, here tonight sort of established <laughs> the, pre the precedent for, you know, really awesome anti-inflammatory option for runners. Yeah. So, uh, probably a year and a half ago, um, I had done um, a 24-hour ultra marathon. Um, then I had, uh, did the 200-mile uh, Ragnar relay, and after that, I had a really bad knee injury. And the doctor put me on some um, pretty heavy prescription pain medicine and told me just see how much you can run with it and just see what you can tolerate because they couldn't figure out what was wrong and. Um, and I really didn't like that. So, you know, switching to, to cannabis to help with some of that, um, you know, that pain relief and, um, you know, anti-inflammatory uh, relief um, was, was kind of a, a game changer for me. Awesome. Wow. Thank you for sharing. Thanks. So I'll, I'll jump in and go next. Uh, unlike Christopher, I am not a long distance runner. So I, I would probably have to say that, you know, some of my favorite products that we produce, I mean, it's more of a general product category, but is definitely our flower. Um, just even through working in post-harvest and, you know, really learning the teams there and the processes that we uphold, um, 
I, I have just such a great respect and love for the product of the quality that we produce there. So three rolls and the packaged flour is definitely my favorite, but I also do want to, you know, shine some light on the dose of feelings uh, products as well. We have those in five milligram, 10 milligram and 25 milligram dosing with five different effect based feelings essentially. So we do use, those are a distillate based capsule. And then we do a specific blend of terpenes into each of the different feeling categories to hit a very specific and desired effect. Um, when we first launched the product category, probably, I don't know, over a year ago, personally, I was very skeptical because, you know, it was all made with more or less the same stuff. So I bought all of them and kind of did a blind, blind study with them. And I was blown away that, you know, kind of each one hits that effect just based on the different terpenes and, it, it shed a lot of light and, you know, kind of proved the point that terpenes really do, you know, make up the effect of what you feel. So, and then that also applies to flour as well. Whatever terpenes are in that flour definitely, you know, steers your effect and feeling into, you know, a specific direction. I was going to say, I, I feel like Pat's our uh, unofficial product tester. So uh, <laughs> I want that job too. He's, yeah. <laughs> I now have 600 emails asking how they can be product testers. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm also a medical patient. So I, you know, fortunately just stop by Somerville and try it all out. You know, I make, I make my purchases like any other medical patient. And fortunately I get to, uh, yeah, kind of try everything that we produce. So it's, it's been a real pleasure. Thus far. <laughs> Looking, forward Looking forward to continuing it for sure. Awesome. Jeremy, uh, you want to take the book? Yeah, I was uh, just going to jump in there. Thank you, James. Um, I found myself over the last uh, year or so gravitating a little more towards uh, not only edibles, but also some of our capsules. Um, uh, I would say that our Dose of Feelings product, which we didn't really bring up, are fantastic. Um, basically, it's our distillate also, you know, blended with terpenes that sort of help uh, highlight the feelings that one may come to expect from, uh, you know, from sativas, indicas, hybrids, and, you know, kind of anywhere along, uh, you know, that spectrum. Um, uh, typically, I've been medicating mostly for sort of sleepliness, sleeplessness more than anything. I've had trouble pretty much my entire life. Um, more than anything, it's, you know, staying asleep for more than, you know, three or four hours. And I found a lot of those, especially the ones that are geared more towards the indica feelings, definitely keep me asleep at night. Um, and edibles do, uh, you know, do well for me in that regard as well. But um, as far as flour, typically I've realized that sativa strains are great, especially for the day. Um, I look for something that's going to be sort of euphoric and uh, clear headed. And we've had a few offerings over the years uh, that have really been great for me. And the East Coast Sour Diesel is one that uh, I've really enjoyed. Um, um, but yeah, pretty much uh, capsules also find one to one products to be really good, especially when I've got to when I've got to be able to focus on some tasks, uh, they don't leave me sort of in any sort of haze or uh, don't leave me feeling distracted whatsoever. And that's a one-to-one, -one, one part THC to one part CBD? Yes, correct. I guess, yeah, yeah. yeah. I would, I'll jump in next and Chris kind of stole my thunder, but mine's for a different reason. Oh, I can, you can't really see it, but I have the dewdrop um, low dose lemon. And I call this, um, the reason why I like it, um, I call this my re-entry into cannabis, low dose, um, relax at night. Um, I have five teenagers, <laughs> five teenagers. So it's my way to just um, relax, unwind in a small dose mm -hmm. and great flavor, easy to manage and just all around wonderfulness. Sharon, I, I, I often um, am encouraged by patients that I see when they talk about their relationship to cannabis as it affects their parenting and their, their sort of, you know, their partner relationship. Um, have you felt like it has helped or has it gotten in the way at all of, of your relationships with your children? No, it's really helped actually a lot, particularly in the evening um, as things with in a, in a household with five teenagers could get um, a little bit dicey with homework and things like that. So it's helped me relax. And I feel really be, become a better parent and a better listener. Um, but it's, it's really helped me personally. And I, I use the word re-entry because it, it's been 
since college, you know, I had my children and things like that. So it's an easy way at two and a half milligrams to really, um, be able to see how my body reacts to things and, and, and the feeling I get. And so, yeah, it's been really helpful to me. Oh, it's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. I guess that leaves me. And I thought I would like boil it down to one, but I, I've got, a, I've got at least two. Um, and, and one I would say is the medicine, you know, the medicine starts with our staff to me. Uh, and, and that's, um, you know, that, just being seen when you walk in a place and the, the fact that Jeremy hires empathetic people who are willing to listen and who are passionate about this medicine, who are inspired by it to, uh, uh, that, that, that means everything to me. Um, uh, as far as the products I just go to um, on a regular basis, I have a bad back um, RSO which we sell in a capsule. Um, so RSO stands for Rick Simpson oil. It really is it, referring to a full spectrum extract. Well, what I mean by that is instead of a capsule, just um, um, instead of just concentrating or, or, or processing out the THC or, or CBD or one specific cannabinoid, we were able to extract the full range of, of naturally occurring compounds. Uh, including the cannabinoids like CBD and THC and CBN and CBD, I mean, CBG um, and terpenes uh, that we've talked about throughout this presentation, uh, all of which are found in the original flower. Um, so I, I just find that the impact of that you know, five milligrams can be uh, incredibly beneficial to my back and just, it melts away. Um, we offer uh, these, you know, often RSO is sold in, in a syringe and it's a very sticky kind of substance and very difficult to, to work with, but uh, we have um, uh, figured out a way to get it into a capsule. We sell it in a five milligram and a 25 milligram capsule. Uh, and I would, for my experience, it is the most medicinally valuable product that we've, that we sell. Um, it just, for folks who have, no, who nothing else works for their insomnia. RSO could work for folks that have, you know, nothing else has worked for their, uh, for their, for some chronic pain issues. Um, I've seen RSO work. Uh, it's just, it's a miracle product. Mm -hmm. um, the, the other thing I would say is, you know, we mentioned, uh, maybe, maybe Pat mentioned um, live, uh, our live, um, uh, our, our live uh, spectrum products. And really um, that, that, I think you described it as flash frozen. Um, the, the way I would describe it is, it's like taking the plant of cannabis and squeezing it. And if you could get the juice out of that, that would be um, our, our, our live cannabis products. Um, there's, the flavor is just incredible. Um, the terpenes, uh, which are relatively volatile compounds, which uh, you know, easily uh, evaporate uh, or you know, get diminished by light and oxygen and heat. Um, they're trapped early on. We, we flash freeze it when we harvest it and then we process it frozen. So you get all of that trapped in and the medicinal value that, of that product is just, um, it's significant. The flavor is, uh, is amazing. And we have a great one right now at uh, Somerville, uh, which is strain bergamot. Um, it's a live Pax pod. And if anyone doesn't know what a Pax pod is, that is like a 510 cart. It's like an oil um, pod. You buy a battery, you put it in. And it's actually for anyone who, uh, uh, who, who um, struggles with dosing uh, and, and, uh, and, and, um, and inhalables. Um, well, Pax has got a way of actually limiting and titrating the dose. You can set the dose um, for each inhalation. Um, so it's just a really great product. Um, and we have a lot of great pods for it. I just tried that bergamot for the first time the other day and instantly fell in love with it. I just got really excited. I don't know if anyone saw my face when you mentioned that. I, uh, I lit up. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm excited about that one as well. And I know that some of you may have heard of, um, you know, uh, the, the, the vape gate um, and all of that sort of stuff. And these live products are pure cannabis terpenes. They are, they are just the safest way to consume um, uh, oil, cannabis to vape cannabis oil. Yeah, to, under, to underscore a couple of things that you said, um, you know, jumping off the vape gates, you know, I tell, I'll tell most of my patients um, that that had really nothing to do with regulated yes. dispensaries. Um, it was mostly just people cooking it on the street or in their own homes, selling things in an uneducated fashion. It's really not it's something why we need dispensaries. Yeah. Yep. Um, and also to underscore what you were saying about the staff and the warmth, there's, there is actually data to support 
the emotional perspective that people take to cannabis. You know, if you're coming from a frame of mind, which is negative as opposed to positive, you're going to have a very different experience. Um, so it's actually, there is science behind that. Um, and, and it's really wise to hire um, such incredible staff. You know, the, the way that you guys all have opened up and, and shared is really endearing um, the, to the warmth that you guys um, bring to the patient experience. I think that's really, um, really incredible. I mean, and I'm sure it you know, comes through to everybody watching. We feel, um, we feel the same way about Seed Clinic and, and you and your staff, Dr. Kaplan. Thank you. Yeah. Um, awesome. So this has been a fantastic um, demonstration and to, for everybody to really feel not only the, the dispensary, but, but a sense of you know, who you guys are. It's really um, incredible. Um, it might be the best one we've ever had. So, so you guys take the trophy. Um, Thank you. Anything Appreciate else for that. tonight before we say goodbye? Those of us who are not runners, you know, this is as good as it gets, Chris. Okay, it's not a trophy. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. I think I think we might have to credit you in some very public way about if if um, a, a, athletics and cannabis are tied together in some meaningful way, we'll say that um, it was really you, Christopher, that that launched it. I, 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 I don't know about that, but hey, take it. I'm, I'm glad I could be a, a part of it in some in some way. Yeah. Well, we'll we'll, we'll blast it as far as we can. Thank you. All right. Thanks, everybody, for joining. Um, this is Liberty, and we had a great nice. time meeting you. Thanks a lot. Bye, everybody. Thank you very Appreciate much. It. Thank you. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night.